Today, you and I are going to take a trip up to the clouds to talk about the new on cloud stratus. Let's get into it. Before we get into the review, I have to let you know this was a shoot provided to me by On, but they're not going to watch this video before any of you folks. And by the end of the video, it will be abundantly clear that all views are my own. Let's get into it. 30 millimeters of stack cut in the heel, 22 in the forefoot. At least that's what I saw on Road Trail Run. They're typically pretty good, so I trust them. That means it's an eight millimeter drop. The midsole on this thing is Helion Superfoam, and it has Cloud Tech technology, which is essentially just these holes in the midsole. Quite an interesting implementation. Oh, and it also has a speed board in this thing. Kind of acts as a plate, but not really. It's a neutral max cushion shoe, and does it twist? It does twist a little bit, but not as much as you might expect. They've used a bunch of recycled materials to create this shoe, which is pretty cool. You need some sustainability within this world. So what's new in the new Cloud Stratus? Honestly, I didn't run in the first version, but On did send me a spec sheet, so here's the list. They've added four foot dual sequential cloud systems. There's bigger holes between the cloud system here. They narrowed the wall and connecting the clouds. They increased the cushioning and dynamic feel. There's a new speed board in it and it has a lot more recycled material. Before we get into the specifics of this shoe, I just wanna go over the theory of max cushion shoes in general. So to me, a max cushion shoe is something that has a whole bunch of foam and that foam is typically pretty soft. And what you want to use those shoes for is for your long and easy recovery days. It's a great type of shoe to have in your rotation, regardless if you're an advanced runner or a beginner runner just getting into training. I actually recommend that a lot of beginners get a mask cushion shoe, typically because it's a little bit more forgiving for your legs if you're not really strong or not used to the impact from You know, running. it's one of those shoes that you can lean on when your legs are really sore. Someone like, you know those friends that you have in hard times that you call up and say, hey. You know what, buddy? My legs are super sore. Yeah. I need you. Well, that's where the max cushion shoes will come in and swoop in and save you. But honestly, here's the formula for a max cushion shoe for me. It's high stack height plus soft foam equals high stack cushion shoes. And unfortunately, the Cloud Stratus does not obey that formula. What we have here is high stack, but it's very, very firm. But we'll get into that in the midsole section. Upper on this thing is pretty darn good. But there's a couple of questionable decisions, namely, why would they use this suede-like material on the eyelid chain? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. To me, it honestly just adds a little bit of extra weight. And sure, it's not gonna rip, but I haven't really had trouble with an eyelid chain ripping on any type of shoe. Another questionable decision is the amount of plastic that they put around the heel collar here. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense why it needs to be so rigid. It's actually quite a thick piece of plastic, why? It does the job, like the lockdown through the heel is really good, but why? But aside from those questionable decisions, my time running in this shoe today was actually very, very pleasurable. I ran, like you saw, in very rainy conditions, and this thing did not really absorb any water whatsoever. The breathability of this thing is actually really nice as well. You can see pretty much straight through the forefoot and toe box area here, and it's pretty good. The eyelet chain, I did mention they have a questionable kind of suede-like material, but it's actually kind of interesting. They use something called a star lacing system. And what it does is give a little bit more structure through the toe box. So the material isn't laying directly on your foot, which enhances that breathability for me personally. I'm not sure if that's the intent behind it, but that's what I'm gonna go with. The lockdown is actually really fantastic. Like I said, the ankle collar and heel cup area, great lockdown in the heel. The gusseted tongue that they have here, great lockdown through the midfoot. And the, the lockdown through the forefoot is actually not that bad either. It's a very accommodating upper as well. It's not very narrow. It's very accommodating for the wider foot like myself. It's not super wide. My foot's not like extremely voluminous, but it did the job and accommodated me. And like I said, folks, I went there on a super rainy day, did not hold any water, and that's a big positive in my books. So overall, the upper on this thing was pretty enjoyable, aside from the questionable decisions in the eyelet chain and the extra plastic through the heel collar. Those decisions don't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I'm no shoe designer. I don't understand why they make these decisions. I'm just here to review them. It's time to talk about the Helion Super Foam. And I have to be quite honest, it's not a Super Foam. At least it's not a super foam in the sense that it's not like a ZoomX material or a Light Strike Pro material or Flight Foam Turbo material. It's nothing like that. It's a very firm, dense, heavy foam. And before I get into it, I have to be honest, I am not someone that likes very firm shoes. And this is a very firm shoe. I'm someone that likes a bit more of a forgiving foam, something that compresses a little bit when I put my body weight under it. I like that sensation of squishing into a shoe. And unfortunately, the Helium Super Foam mixed with that speed board, that's not what you get. The clouds, they're not clouds. They do not feel like you're running on clouds. And that's something that I've always been curious about on's marketing. Why do they call it clouds when it's not soft? Sure, there's holes in their air, but 
I, I guess Air is already taken by Nike. Maybe that's why. But if you're someone that likes a bit more of a firm midsole, I do think that this would really work for you. For me, it's just not something I really enjoy. However, I kind of did get into a rhythm after about three or four kilometers. And I did kind of start enjoying it. But again, I thought about the intent behind the shoe and where it sits in the marketplace. And where it's meant to sit in the marketplace is that max cushion shoe. And like I explained before, for me, a max cushion shoe is something that has a lot of high stack height, cushiony, pillowy foam, kind of like, I don't have it, oh yeah, I do, kind of like the Fresh Foam More V3. This is a awesome, exactly what I want, max cushion shoe. That Fresh Foam X is very squishy. And that's what I think about when I think of a max cushion shoe. This midsole here, the Helion Super Tech with the speed bore, is more like a traditional daily trainer that's a little bit higher stack. But for me, why have a higher stack height firm midsole? doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But again, I just review the shoes and have my own opinions. I'm sure there's people that understand why it would be the But for case. me, I just have a hard time understanding the positioning of this shoe in the marketplace. That was really negative. But again, I have to be honest, if you are someone that likes a firmer shoe and you do like a shoe that's a very, very smooth sensation in their foot, I do think that the Helion Super Foam with that Cloud Tech technology and the speed board in this thing actually can do a good job for someone that really enjoys that type of Moving rock. on to the Oat Soul. And this Oat Soul actually did a decent job in the rain today. I wasn't entirely sure how the normal rubber Oat Soul would really hold up, but it held up quite well. I didn't pick up any rocks, but yes, that is something with on shoes. You can pick up little friends when you're out there running and they can get stuck in the grooves here. But for me, I run on typically like pavement and stuff. So it's not really a concern. Moving on to the value section. And this guys, this is where things really take a turn for the worse. This shoe is 220 Canadian dollars, 170 US dollars. What are they thinking with the pricing of this shoe? It doesn't make any sense. How can they justify pricing this shoe at that price point? That's in the territory with some racing shoes. Hulk of Carbon X, for example, is 225 Canadian dollars, five dollars more, and you get yourself the Hulk of Carbon X. This shoe, to me, like I said, is kind of falling in that normal daily trainer, higher stack daily trainer range, which to me is between 130 and 150 US dollars, or 160 to 180 Canadian dollars. This is where that shoe sits. And I do feel that if Alm were to price their shoes around that point, it would actually introduce more and more people into the brand. And that could grow the brand even more. Because right now, when you go into a running shoe store, you see this shoe on. You think, oh wow, that looks super cool. You put it on your feet and you, you're kind of intrigued by the sensation. But then you go up to the cash, you didn't look at the price tag at the, at the wall because you just want to get a shoe that looks cool. So when you go and they scan it and it comes in, at 220 Canadian dollars plus 15% tax here in Nova Scotia, you're just gonna have to say, I'm sorry, I, I can't risk it. I don't wanna try a brand new shoe that I haven't tried before from a brand that I'm not familiar with. If you're in the running community, sure, On is well known. Otherwise, outside of the running community, people don't know who Aunt is. So lowering that price just a little bit to introduce more and more people into the brand, I think would be a great decision. I don't think that 220 Canadian dollars is worth it right now for the shoe. I don't think 220 Canadian dollars is worth it for many shoes. So that's just my opinion and I'm sticking to it. But overall guys, this shoe just isn't for me. I love the upper a lot, it's fantastic, but that midsole ride just isn't for me. If you're someone that likes a firmer midsole ride that's very smooth, definitely consider checking it out, but try to pick it up on sale because that price tag, that just gives me the heebie-jeebies. All right, guys, thank you all so much for making it to the end of this video. If you haven't already, please hit that like button. And if you're watching the content regularly and you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Why not? It's free. It makes me happy. And I hope to see you on future videos. I will catch you on the next one.